Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 32 of We Happy Few. We are up and about... Okay, so that was really fast. I just ate stew before. Oh well, I was talking too long, I guess. So if I go out there, I guess they will still hate me. So I think I'm gonna take the fast travel route. Oh no, I can't. Oh well. So what else is there to eat to keep my blood sugar up? Maybe jerky. Let's see. A little bit. One more. Okay. Oops, wrong button. So, I guess they will hate me if I pass through there. My eyesight isn't that bad. Oh. No, they don't. Oh, well. Good to know. So, now we need to go to the village. Let's see um, how they will react to us there. But in the meantime, I'm going to pick some stuff as well, because we need it. Especially with our whole blood sugar thing. Because um, I think the other way around it will drain our health. So I suppose we should stock up on healing bomb. Okay, so here we are at the bridge. I also realized that yeah. Observe how the concrete is used for its raw and unpretentious honesty, contrasting with the pretentious ornamentality of the Victorian buildings of the parade. Rather than hiding the structure, the surface preserves the shape of the in situ casting forms, revealing the nature of its construction. Well, I think it's hideous. I've never fathomed brutalism myself. Where was Margaret now? I didn't see her. Um, what I wanted to say is blue currents give a little bit of blood sugar as well. So what's happening here? Why is this open? I can never quite bring myself to hate these <sighs> poor sick bastards. I try not to kill them. Because they're still people. Hey, oh, a bit of that. <laughs> Ouch. So that was, those are the ones with the red hats. Okay, so... You pissed me off bastard. already. What do you have with you? Oh, I don't need your stupid umbrella. So, I wonder. Because we can't really... There is nothing that we could look uh, good with. As, except for, you know, a boiler suit. Because there is not... We don't have, like proper suit or anything that we could craft. I guess Ollie wouldn't know how that looks. So if we just go in here like this, will normal people get angry too? Oh, yeah, they get suspicious. Don't be a drag, baby. Okay. <laughs> okay, lady. You never liked me, did you? No, I guess not. Well, this is going to be interesting because everyone hates us. How am I supposed to go anywhere? If I can't sprint properly, if everyone... I don't know, if everyone kind of hates me. If I just pass you here... You're going dressed like that? If I just pass well, there, keep walking or anything... Yeah, nope, it doesn't work. So I don't really know how I no more, Mr. Nice Guy. could have acquired a sewing kit one more because I'm still missing one. Oops. Although I think it wouldn't matter anymore if I would just go through one of those joy barricades because seriously, I didn't murder anyone. I'm just walking through here. So. I don't know what to do anymore. There's the guilty bugger. No need to come down and see what's that cutscene. Hey, get out of my way. Oh, okay, so that's it. Protecting the haves from the have nots since 1829. Okay, I'm concealed. Past them, or it's going to be a bit of a ruckus. 
Well, I already caused a big ruckus, but I don't know how I should have avoided that. Because everyone is suspicious of me now because of my clothes. What am I wearing? Oh, I'm wearing the uniform, but... Is that why the people... Is that why all those soldiers are still in the memorial camp? Because they aren't allowed in there? No, because they want to be soldiers, but I don't understand why this... This uniform just triggers everyone. Or is it just because we look like a wastrel? So I think we're done. I hope that now we can enter. Oh wow. What a pretty house. With mice statues. So. Okay. No one's there. Except for this guy. There's not been a murder. Where should there have been a murder? Okay, so he's... Okay. So Wait, I'll enter... your head, you scabby walloper! That's it! What just happened? Why is everyone freaking out? So I would like to sneak up on him and take him out. Oh, oh it's Constable Rossetti! Take my fat box, you weasel-headed gobshite! Say hi to your wife for me. I guess her cake was good. It's all the talk in the city. Was it cake that she made or did you did she, did everyone just ask about Constable he did Rosetti? It. I know he did. I did not. Okay, maybe yes I did. Could I just trigger a cutscene if I knock? Nope. Ooh. In combat. Cheer up, you Dude. Oh, you're so yeah. annoying. Okay, well, you didn't see I guess that. we'll meet in hell. So we're going to see Miss Bing. I, I didn't ask you here, did I? If you take enough joy, sometimes one forgets the silliest things. People in town are getting a tad bit skinny. I think they're starving to death. And they're painting the streets in fucking rainbows. Have you not noticed? Have you had your joy, Ollie? Why are you all wearing those ridiculous new masks? You should get one. They shape your face into a smile, and when you smile, you can't help being happy. You were kind to me, even when I got confused. I had no one else to turn to. Oh, Ollie. We have to tell people. They need to know the truth. No, Ollie. People do not need to know the truth. Truth is the enemy of happiness. Isn't that the decision we all made? Oh, but you know the truth, don't you? There's not a thing I can tell you that you don't already know, is there? No. It's better not to know. You, of all people, should understand that. I'm truly sorry about this, Miss Bing. Help! There's a donor in my... Ah! 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 <sighs> Is this some sort of silly prank? When I left the village, I thought you people knew what you were doing. Turns out, well, I've been keeping to myself. I have a pillbox in my kitchen. Would you mind terribly bringing me my joy? Oh, no, I can't. Please, Ollie. You were never cruel. I'm a soldier, ma'am. They teach you to be cruel. I need to see the executive 
committee. They won't listen. You'll only upset them, and then they'll take more joy and forget. They don't want the whole truth. No one wants the whole truth. You know what, Miss Bing? I'll come back. I'll come back when you're in your right mind. No! You can't, please. I, I'll take you to the executive committee. I'll walk you there. Anything. Just please give me my joy. I need my joy. Why won't you give me my joy? Sure, I'll go get it for you right away. Now, where would a woman stash her joy? I'm afraid joy is after my time. Oh well, um, that was a very drastic measure, but I think I'm gonna go through your house, I'm gonna look a bit around, and maybe I'll find her joy. Okay. So my blood sugar is very slow again, so do you have anything to eat here too, or... Well, what's in there? Ooh, leather scraps. Ah, the kitchen. There's nothing in here. Who's cooking for you? Oh. Here we go. She certainly hates to be off her joy, doesn't she? You're not going to give it to her. Oh, a sandwich. That's definitely good to eat still. So... Ooh, sugar. Though I guess we don't need sugar as much anymore. I guess we could need some... There's a lot of tea leaves here. She's truly British. What's here? A pantry or something? Oh, it's a garden. Blue currants, also good. Oh, not living on such. Oh no, it's just the roses. Um. Oh well. So what's in here? Ooh. What else do you have? Evaporated milk. Milk. Bit of sugar makes everything better. So she's got coffee while the rest of us are drinking toasted chicory. Oh wow! Did you really just have coffee beans? Nice. You got it going. Oh well, so... Um... So, I guess, what was going on before v with Victoria Bing and Ollie? <gasps> Ooh, stuff to read. Yes, sternly worded letter. To Clive Bird, Bird Whistle from Victoria Bing, there is nothing wrong with your bloody office, except that it is too small to hold your inflated ego. You seem to think if you do a terrible job and gossip about me, don't think I didn't hear what you said to Deirdre, I'll promote you. And frankly, Arthur's throughput is twice yours and far more accurate. Do not send this to Clive. Take another joy. Oh, yeah. It was the, it, this was the colleague from, from, from Arthur's I don't think she likes work. it very much. No, I guess no one liked him very much. <laughs> Happy New Year, my dear. Congratulations on your promotion to Executive Council to the Executive Committee. I feel certain this will be one of Wellington Wells' happiest years, thanks to all your hard work. Your Happy Face campaign has been a rousing success. I will remember when you suggested putting joy in the water. You were right, after all. I am proud to call you my daughter. Keep up the good work. Your father, General Bing. Dictated, not read. Oh, so Victoria is not his wife, but his daughter. Oh, lovely. A hypodermic. And only slightly used. This ought to work. Oh, okay. So now we have the three, thr th 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 three syringes. Um. Oh, Scotch. I think we need to, to get this back to the guy, right? Yeah, I don't want to go back to Victoria already. So... As, as I see it, Victoria is living here alone while her father is um, out there in the camp and doing, I don't know. Ooh, hidden attic. Whoa! 
What a bathroom that is. Why would you put a bathroom upstairs? Oh! Dearest V, by the time you read this, I'll be gone. Leaving you is the hardest part of what I have to do. You were right about my being off joy. The others were easy to fool, but you, of course, were always so attuned to my moods. I'm sorry for, saving, for saying you were just imagining it, but I did so to protect you. You must know by now my true feelings for you, though I suspect they are not reciprocated. Please don't come looking for me. We both know that your sense of duty is at the core of your being. I will always remain your true friend, even though our paths must not diverge yes truly prue so victoria bing was was the v that prue was in love with Ooh. okay it's all coming together again i love this ah already in which oliver does the first thing that pops into his head Oliver had never been one of those people, like ministers and the general, who could talk to anyone about anything and sound fascinated. So he ought to have guessed that this conversation with Miss Victoria was going to go badly. But it was not really his fault. Their conversation went badly because Miss Victoria was off her head. Indeed, none of the regular people of Wellington Wells was in his right mind. Many of them had not seen the insides of their right mind since 1952. That was the year everyone decided that everyone had to take joy every day. Joy did not really make the Wellies happy, as far as Oliver knew. It made them forget a wee bit, and that made them a wee bit less sad, but Oliver suspected that they had not really forgotten all the sad things. They were only pretending, and the thing that scared the Wellies most was someone would not play the pretending game, because if one person stopped playing it was as if he had taken his ball and gone home and no one could play the game at all anymore. When Oliver came to see Miss Victoria, oh best beloved, she did not want to hear about any sort of fake tanks. She shouted that Oliver was not playing pretend and she attempted to run away. That made Oliver very embarrassed. He needed to talk to Miss Victoria, but if she ran away, it would be very hard to talk to her. So he did the first thing that came into his head, indeed the only thing, which was a kidnapping. When Oliver was a child, he had read Robert Louis Stevenson kidnapped and he had decided to grow up to be a pirate. But now that he was behaving piratically, with an actual proper lady thrown over his shoulder, like a screaming sack of potatoes, he did not like it at all. He felt far too much like he had when he had lived in the village many years ago and that bad man began to appear on every television screen. But needs must when the devil drives, and so... Piratically, Oliver tied Miss Victoria to a chair and carried her off to be a captive in a side room of her own house. Well, no, it's yeah, basically the, the entrance, but... I can't get over this bathroom. I mean, why would you build a bathroom upstairs? <laughs> so weird. But let's keep searching. Ooh, letter from Bing's wife. Keep pressing the wrong buttons again. So, what's this? July 1932, Rajasthan Central Prison. Dear Pinky, or should I call you Colonel Bing now? I'm sure you will say that having me arrested was your duty, but duty to whom? Does not your own family command your loyalty? I thought you were different, but you are like other Englishmen. How very convenient for you to be done of your Indian wife before you sail home. Once you were dazzled by my father's palace and connections, without which you might still be a junior officer. But when your orders came for England, you began to see me with different, more critical eyes, didn't you? Or perhaps you found out that I'd contacted the solicitor. Divorce is rather scandalous among the officers set. Perhaps you worried it would harm your career. Oh, but now that you've made the great sacrifice of arresting your own wife, you might even get promoted to general for your patriotism. Bravo, Pinky, bravo. You English do go for that duty above all, Tosh. You may fool others with it, but I will always know exactly who you are. Perhaps that is a true reason you can no longer bear to meet my eyes. I no longer know how to sign off on a letter to you. Neither love nor yours seems appropriate anymore, Lily. P.S. I've asked my father to take Victoria when you sail for England. Don't pretend you object. You've undoubtedly been trying to think of a face-saving reason to leave her behind. What with her being the half-Indian daughter of a revolutionary? How very inconvenient that would be for you back home. The general arrested his own wife because she wanted a divorce? Well, he's not getting a better person. <laughs> so, Victoria is half-Indian, but if if her father didn't want to have her here anyway how did she get here 
Oh. Rajasthan Central Prison. My darling Victoria, I'm sure your father has told you his version, his version of why I've been sent away. Please know that I love you and never intended to leave you. I hope that someday you will understand that I was doing my own duty just as he does his. India cannot remain under British rule any longer. Surely even he can see that. I fear for your future if he takes you back to England. I was there for boarding school and for all they give you your rank at table and seat you as is proper for the daughter of a Maharaja. When they look at you they see a wog. You won't be half English. In England you will always be a wog no matter how hard you work to imitate their ways. I'm writing to your grandfather asking him to take you in when your father goes back to England. He did not mean to shout at you when you called his palace backwards for not having electric fans. He was thinking about politics. Please be a good girl and make up with his highness your grandfather. I suspect that you will disregard my advice as it comes from prison. Your father must seem like the much smarter parent right now, but someday you will know all the things that I know. I hope you will understand who you are and what your true duty is before it is too late. Your loving mummy. So, I guess Victoria's mother took part in a rebellion for India's independence, and so the general had her arrested. Okay, so will we give her her joy now? Is that really the true thing to do? Oh, okay, return in quotation marks, so I guess not. This is what you were looking for, wasn't it? I'm afraid I can't let you have it. Why the fuck are you doing this? You evil downer bastard! I am gonna kill you! I am going to kill you! Sorry, I need my words to stick in your head instead of flying right out the other ear. I've got to answer the blower. People depend on my decisions. Oh well, um... Okay, our blood sugar level is really low. Oh, there's the blower. She's got her own pneumatic. I better answer it. Hello. Oh. Who the hell is Clive Birthwhistle? You should find out if she likes him or not. You can't trust her, of course. Maybe there's a letter or something somewhere. They're going to need an answer right away. You don't know how critical my answers are. Oh, relax. I don't think you're that important. Jeez. So... Oh, wait. So how do I respond? To Miss Victoria, being Arthur's office. As Arthur's office is now vacant, I do hope you will see your way to letting me have it. We also saw how he behaved at Deirdre's birthday party. He's probably gone on holiday by now. I hope you will not keep his office vacant as you did Prudence's. Not that I am questioning your authority. I know you and Prudence were so fond of each other. I am merrily concerned that Prime Office is going to waste. Surely someone as sufficiency minded as yourself can see that, Clive. P.S. Arthur was only senior to me because I made a lateral transfer from the Bureau of Civic Happiness. His office should have been mine all along. Oh, jeez. Oh, Clive. I guess we know that Victoria hates Clive. And although it doesn't make any sense because there's no right reason for it, because there's no argument for why we shouldn't give Clive his office, but I still don't want to give him to him. So... Wait. Um, is there a document that we missed, or how is it going to play out now? Ah, give Clive the office or get back to work. No, get back to work, I think. <laughs> Dear Mr. Birthwhistle, thank you so much for your suggestion. May I suggest you spend a little more time pondering your work, and less time pondering where you do it? That sounds like her, all right. Uh, oh, I forgot to look here. Steel duct tape, pick a lock. So, whose bedroom is this? Ooh, a maid outfit. I'm gonna take it. Ooh, more empty syringes, that's good. So honey that's missing though. So okay. I think we should have been in every room now. 
Okay. Answer the letter and send a response. I did send a res send a response. Yes. Off you go. Bye. This so see, I can do your job too. Joke, isn't it? <laughs> it's terribly funny, Ollie. Let's just call this a prank, and you can untie me now. Please. Well. That's my regular off-site executive committee meeting. Won't they be surprised to find you've tied me up? What unconvincing lie are you going to try to fob them off with? You better answer it. What do I see? Tell them you're the general and the meeting's been postponed. Oh well. Um, shall we get her? Probably. Get away from Good that we picked up some duct tape. Hello. Hello. It's Beatrice Dalrymple from the executive committee. I'm so sorry. Something's come up. Please come back tomorrow. Is that General Bing? Yeah, I haven't got time to chit chat. We're trying to save the world. All right. Tomorrow then. Tomorrow, I guess. I hope Miss Bing didn't sneak off while I wasn't looking. Hmm, of course. How should she have? Hey there. Take the key and lock her up. Lock her up. Lock her up. Take the key and lock her up, my fair lady. I brought some food. I made them sing, Ollie. So they wouldn't be afraid. But then they had to get on the train. Do you remember how they screamed? I, I remember. All except my daughter. Your daughter? I, Margaret. Because she was dead. <gasps> You've got to eat. Oh, I'm gonna throw it right back up. What was it your dad fed you when you were sick and couldn't eat anything else? <laughs> Coffee yogurt. I'll bring some. Give me my joy! <laughs> Why won't you give me my joy? I'll get you that coffee yogurt. <laughs> Why won't you give me my joy? Why won't you give me my joy? <laughs> All right, coffee yogurt. What is yogurt exactly? It's fermented milk, like cheese, only it doesn't curdle. So I just need some old milk and some coffee. And probably some sugar to make the medicine go down. Well, I think after we looted Miss Bing's pantry already, I think we should have a lot of... Yeah, we can do it. Coffee, beans, evaporated milk and sugar. So we can do that. Well, that's... Coffee yogurt a la Starkey. <laughs> I hope she's not particular. Everything is quite all right. Sleepy tight. Nighty night. Everything's tucked out of sight. My fair lady. I think you better give her that yogurt. Oh well. Oh wait, I first want to read the diary though. Our hero was not very experienced in the way of crying women. Indeed, O oh best beloved, he had once married, only to find that his beloved wife cried every night for reasons he could never fathom, and so it had been a brief marriage. So he did not know how to talk to Miss Victoria, for she would not stop crying, for she wanted nothing in the world so much as her pills of joy, and Oliver could not give them to her, not if he wanted to have that talk. He was going to have to keep her kidnapped a bit longer, and that meant he would have to feed her, and she would only eat coffee yogurt. Unfortunately, you could no longer buy any kind of milk in Wellington Wells. All the cows of Wellington Wells had been eaten during the lean years. Still, such a thing as powdered milk existed, and where there was powdered milk, there could be yogurt. 
Oliver was never a cook nor a chemist, but he was an expert scrounger. He had found water in the Kalahari Desert, and he had found a pineapple in a track across the highlands, and he had found a decent English pub in Antwerp. He had faith that if he tried, he could find milk and coffee and keep Miss Victoria fed. Oh well, so this scene is actually pretty hard because I also understand Victoria's view. She knows the secret. She knows what she did because she was also involved with it a lot because she, as she said she did sing to the children who, um, before the train departed. So I guess she knows a lot too and I guess she desperately wants to forget and she desperately doesn't want to remember. That's why she's so desperate to, to get her joy because she knows that if she doesn't take it regularly she won't she will start to remember again so i kind of feel with her a little bit it's very hard to do this <laughs> oh well but what i really am excited to find out i'm not excited for it but it will happen eventually i guess because ollie said that the only one who didn't scream when the train departed from the children was his daughter because she was dead. How did that happen? <laughs> How did she die? Was it really at the departure? Or was it something that happened before but because she... Like it happened with Sally's family? Like Sally's mother who killed her two girls too because she didn't want them to go on the train? I don't know. I guess we will find out eventually. So, let's feed Victoria. What a pretty cup. This is awful. You've ruined it. Oh, father. Why have you forsaken me? <laughs> I didn't know what else to do. Oh, that will be the gardeners. Perhaps you can suggest some lovely colour combinations. I think you better answer that. I didn't realise she was quite this popular. Oh well, I definitely- I wanted to say that Get too. Away! You're losing- we're using quite a lot of duct tape. So who am I pretending to be? You could always pretend to be the maid. Who is it? It's Brown, the gardener. Could you get Miss Bing? I'm sorry, she's very busy. You should have said that she's out. She's very busy being out. <laughs> I'll leave it with you then. Would you uh, open up, please? I haven't got time to shave. Well, wrap something around your face. And I'm a fat, ugly Scotsman. Not all maids are thin, pretty and French. You've got all the bloody answers, haven't you? Just a minute! You better make sure she's out of sight. So, should I stick her in a closet somewhere? I'm afraid so. <laughs> this is very bizarre, but we already picked up the, the clothing. Oh no, really? We're going to wear a dress now? Oh well. I really want to know how we look. Okay, so, let's go. Oh, sadly our sleeves didn't change. Okay, see you in a bit. Ah, oh, let's lock the door. Hey there. Did the counting of all the gardening supplies. She could pay me next week. Cheerio. I'll see that she gets it. There are acts of heroism you never get a medal for, and they're some of the bravest. <laughs> Oh, I think you'd better let her out. No, you may not just leave her in there for a bit. I didn't say a word. <sighs> G. 
Jeez, relax. This is not an airtight door and the room isn't that small. See, door is open. Well, that's a good look for you. Suits you. You might want to shave a bit. I wonder why the gardener didn't have any reaction to a Scottish man opening up the door in a dress. Christ almighty, can't these people think for themselves? You must let me answer my messages! They won't know what to do on their own! Yeah, of course, because you drug them all up. I promise I won't put in any secret cries for help. I just need to un- I can do that for you, but what about Prudence? To Miss Victoria Bing from Constable HQ. Dear Miss Bing, we are attempting to ascertain the whereabouts of one of your employees, Prudence Holmes. We fear she may have become a downer. Have you seen her at your office or domicile or received any indication of her whereabouts? We would like to know when you last spoke to her. Regards, Constable Sickert. Sadly, we know where Prudence is, but Sir, Ollie the doesn't. Hell is Prudence Holmes? You really ought to get out more, Ollie. Just let me point them in the right direction. Ah, I'm just... So, are you... Hmm. So, what can we answer here? She's around, she's been gone. Well, I guess we're going to point them in the right direction and say that she's been gone. Oh, now we have the right sleeves. Uh, all right. <sighs> I'm afraid she's been gone from the office for some time. Good luck. Why do I feel like a squealer? Off you go. I was your friend. The only one who was nice to you. Why would you do this to me? Oh well, I don't know about their past. Maybe we can find out now, but... I'm really sorry I have to do this to you, actually. But I guess it must be done. Have you at least got a cigarette? They'll kill you, you know. Whoever told you that? Last time I managed to dig some out of the rubble, a house collapsed on me. <laughs> I nearly died. Give me some joy! I need my joy! You'll feel better soon. Ish, I think. Miss Bing? Oh, Miss Bing? It's Constable Naismith. You're busier than a one-legged man at an arse-kicking contest, aren't you? You won't fool the bobbies. They'll expect their sandwiches. I think he's getting upset. Ollie, you better talk to him. Hi there. Oh, wait. There are sandwiches here, right? Or not? Oh! Whoa! He came in the back door? Who allowed you to do that? Oh, sorry, Constable! Miss Bing is not here! Well, if you don't mind, Mom. I'll make my own determination as to her localization. You oh, come right in. Miss Bing? You around? You better get Miss Bing back to the closet. Uh, I suppose me... this is where the maids such as yourself in. Oh, oh shut up. What do you have on you? Ah, oh, broken helmet. Oh, we can sell that for good money. Hey there. The children could stop screaming. You have to talk to them. Then they settle down for a bit. Are you mad? <laughs> Aye. We could have saved them, you know. The tanks were made of papier mache. Little Artie Hastings tore a hole in one of them. What could that possibly matter now? I suppose it doesn't. Except that's just the first lie. Then comes the victory that wasn't, and then the happy pills, and the Simon Says, because the kids are all gone. You can paint loaves of bread on the shop windows all you like, but if people don't wake up, we're all going to starve to death. Please, give me my joy. Oh, I need you here with me, ma'am. Not off in Neverland with Wendy and Peter. <sighs> all right. The tanks were paper mache. 
The children didn't have to get on the train. Poor Margaret Worthing didn't have to die. Nah, she didn't. We go to City Hall, back entrance. There's a private elevator. The code is 0126. The date of the victory. I'll write you a letter of transit. It won't be enough. People won't face facts. Not until we take their joy. That's what we have to do, Ollie. And when we do that, they'll murder each other in the street. Then why would you help me? There hasn't been a baby born in Wellington Wells in 17 years. We don't talk about that. I'd forgotten that. Let's go see the executive committee. Oh. People have to know. In an hour, you horrible little man. I won't even know you exist. Oh well, she certainly isn't to too happy to about transit. us. I can't stay here. Victoria's probably run to the police already. Then hurry! Find them! Oh no. I suppose it's up there. What? Where is it? Oh no. Uh. Um. So do I have to write it or... So, okay, I'm just gonna lock myself in here, so they won't see me, and I don't know, where do I have to go? Is it even... no. It's here. We should be in the right room, right? Oh, wait, there was something to pull. Pull. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. So I think I know how I'm going to escape. Or I don't. This one's closed. There was a window that I could get out of, right? No, not this one. Maybe this one. <sighs> Why are all the windows jammed? So I can't jump out of them, I suppose. But this is the back door, so yes. Well, that was unexpected. Ow! But I've got a letter of transit now. I'll see the executive committee in the parade. I'll tell them the food's running out. I'll make them listen. Yeah, do that. So. Where am I going to get out now? Is it the only way? Okay. Is it? Oops, that was close. There's some honey here. So I read somewhere that if you you can direct the bees to someone else and then you can take the honey but I guess this is too dangerous now because I'm only half of the health I'm at only half of my health right now because of my blood sugar how can I get out of here why can't I get out this door ah oh, okay now I can so I guess when you're Ollie, it's better to move around at night than during the day because there are less people here. Uh, so, well, this was definitely a long stay at Miss Bing's house. Um, I wonder, could we? Ooh. Is there someone in here? No, it's not. 
So maybe he has some honey. That would be too cool. Open the flue first. Make sure fire is out before putting in paper. So does anyone have some honey here? Don't cook with sawdust again. Hmm, yeah, that's... There's a lot of pie here. Oh, oops. Oh no. That's almost better than whiskey. Hmm, but we have some pie that we could eat, so maybe that's a good thing for our blood sugar. A little bit. But what if we eat a whole pie? Or a sandwich. <sighs> okay, so the sandwich doesn't do a lot either. But maybe the pie does. Okay, so now we're too high. <laughs> Great. But we still have one of those other syringes. Or don't we? Oh well. I would just like some honey, but nobody has it. Hey there, Jack. Ah, it's the cat park again. Oh, shut up. Oh, I got it with you. We all get what's coming to us in the end. He has an electric truncheon, I want that. Although I'm not that worried about killing bobbies. So, doesn't Sally live somewhere here? Though I don't know. You weren't nice to begin with. You were never nice to me. I think I'm gonna throw a grenade. Oops. Hit myself with it. Whoops! Wrong direction. Ouch! Go die! Oh, I'm dying too. How nice. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Oh well. I think I'm dying. Or not, suckers. <laughs> Can I do a cutscene? <coughs> nope. Combat. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'll cheer you up all right. <laughs> what? I'll cheer you up all right. <laughs> I hate these people. Everyone hates me. And I hate playing Ollie because he's so uh, out of shape. No, I don't hate playing Ollie, but I'm almost dying again. So you're dead. That's good. Really? I only have antiseptic bandages? Great. Now I need to kill them fast. Okay. Die! Whew, okay. 
Let um, this be a lesson to you then. Fast crafting. Okay. Okay, I'm good. Whew. What's here? What's this? To the executive committee. Silly me, I forgot my letter of transit when I went to the village. I didn't expect any difficulty as everyone in Wellington Wells knows me, but when I tried to return home to the parade, the Bobby, whose father was in my employ for decades, told me I could not return home without my letter of transit, which is, of course, at home. It took quite some time doing to, to make him understand the illogic of his position. Finally, his supervisor decided that I must get a new letter of transit, which I would be delighted to do, except the letter of transit's office is, as you know, in the parade. Please, do sort this out soon. I have my bridge group on Tuesday and am most eager to get home. Camilla Trueblood may for garden the parade. Hmm, okay. Oh well, um, I think first... What? Still the wrong button. I think first we're going to spend our points again. So... Maybe this will be a good thing to start with. I think I'm gonna buff up more take less damage from most attacks is also pretty good because we're getting attacked a lot here make them bleed more often is also good do more damage oh throw more throw damage okay whatever people you knock down may stay down are we knocking people down that much i don't know oh whatever we have so how much weight are we? I guess we're still pretty good, but... Um, I guess that's also a good thing to have, that the weapons don't wear out as quick. Hmm, better prices. Oh, no, we don't have enough points for that. Okay, so... Well then, let's get there to... Everything's coming up, Roses! I'm terribly sorry, sir. The executive committee have decided to close the parade of visitors for the duration. Duration of what? They neglected to specify, sir. But I have been specifically informed that it is unrelated to the dispersion of play. So, you may put your mind at ease in that regard. Then how the fuck am I supposed to get to the parade, you bell-headed turd? Perhaps you can dig a tunnel, sir. Good luck! For fuck's sake! It wasn't helping me anyways. Aren't there already tunnels? For the train tracks, oh sure, but there's no way past the hatch on the other side. Believe me, I've tried. Then how does the Motlin get to the village from the mines on Apple Home? You're right, there must be tunnels. I've no idea where. Do I have to spell it out for you? Dr. Faraday! Oh, yes, she designed the Motlin floor system. Oh, she's got to have the blueprints for the Motlin tunnels. Bravo, Ollie. One day you won't need me anymore. Don't you start talking nonsense, lassie. <laughs> I'll go see Dr. Faraday. So the parade's locked up tighter than a vicar's bumhole. Lovely. But there's the Motoline tunnels. Dr. Faraday has to have a map. Maybe she'll let me make a copy. Okay, so next we need to see Dr. Faraday. Um... What I wonder though, shouldn't she still be on Eel Pie Home? I don't know anymore. I'm so confused. There's like three different timelines now. Uh, in which Oliver develops an unexpected headache. Oliver was a trusting person. At school, the lads had lied to him, so and so had teachers. And he had worked for the general through a war and an occupation, and the general lied to the newspaper and to his men and to the Germans and to Oliver. For some reason, he always found it difficult to believe that someone was lying to him. He had never imagined that Miss Victoria, of all people, would stoop so low as to lie to him. But Miss Victoria was not the master of her fate, nor the captain of her soul. Joy was, and so she convinced Oliver that she was on his side when she was not. Oliver had never known Miss Victoria to lift up a chair or indeed anything heavier than a riding crop. She loved to carry the crop in memory of her long-gone polo pony. He, cer she c he certainly had never seen her hit anyone. Her words were weapons enough, so he was not expecting her to hit him over the head with a chair, which was a surprise. 
Oliver was sad. His head ached from behind, hit with a chair, which is something you should never do to people, oh best beloved, but his heart ached more. He had always admired Miss Victoria. She was haughty, but she was dignified. Many of the common people of the town said rude and terrible things behind her back, for they did not know how brave and dignified the Indians are. They only knew the waiters of restaurants, not the brave sepoys of the Indian army. When he had known Miss Victoria, she had never lied to anyone about anything, even when it would have been the practical thing to do. But she pretended to agree with our hero and then she bashed him on the head with a chair and he woke up with an awful headache. But there was no time to ponder the ravages of joy or headaches. Oliver still had to reach the executive committee in his Iry and the parade district. And if Miss Bing would not help him, he would have to find another way there. Oh well. So, in the first act I said that I liked it, that um, Arthur didn't want to reform the whole um, society, uh, uh, but he just wanted out of joy for himself, because he himself wanted to remember, and now it's actually the opposite. All he doesn't remember, or he remembers a little bit, and now he wants to make everyone remember. or. Maybe not ever make everyone remember, but everyone knowing the truth. So I guess it's different. He wants people to know the truth. Well, anyway, that was a pretty intense scene with Victoria Bing. That was pretty tough. She didn't want to remember. It was really sad. I, I really thought that she would help us, but then we got a kick in the crotch and a chair over our head. Well, I guess that's how it goes sometimes. Oh, I'm bleeding? How am I, I bleeding? I almost forget all the bad things, but then I forget to forget them and they come back. Am I really bleeding? No, I can't. I don't need to use this. I don't know why this just popped up. So, anyway, um, we're visiting Dr. Faraday again. And I don't know. It does, I think, this will send us to her shop again, won't it? Because this is where we entered um, on the Dr. Faraday quest. So, I don't, I, I don't think that this would be according to Arthur's timeline <laughs> that she's in her store again. But we will see, we will see if the, her two um, assistants will still try to tell us that Dr. Faraday is dead. Okay, and we still, we really need some honey soon, but I guess this is also something that we should, we can look for in the next episode. Maybe we'll pass a store on our way, and maybe we'll have a store that has honey. Oh, okay, so it's not in the red anymore, our blood sugar, so I guess we should be okay for some time. That was it for today, and thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.